Welcome to video problem 8. Here we are considering Laplace equation in rectangular coordinates and we will use uh, Laplace equation uh, to determine electric potential, fields and charge for a parallel plate capacitor from the assumed known electric potential difference. Please note that this is an approach which is uh, opposite to the one we took in video problem 5. So here we can see the configuration of a uh, parallel plate capacitor uh, which is the same as the one we have uh, considered in video problem 5. We have the upper plate and lower plate, uh, both have the surface area A and they are separated by a uniform separation distance D. Uh, the space in between uh, the conductors is filled with a simple and source-free dielectric material with permittivity epsilon so that there is this simple relationship between the D and E fields inside uh, of the capacitor. The upper plate is kept at a constant potential V0 while the lower plate is grounded so its potential is equal to zero. In the solution of this problem we will assume that the plate separation distance is much smaller than the side length of our capacitor and this essentially means that the plates are infinitely large. In this case the charge will be uniformly distributed on upper and lower plates and this is the surface uh, charge distribution on the upper plate and on the lower plate uh, we will have uh, this negative uh, surface uh, charge distribution. This uh, uniform charge distribution is illustrated uh, further on this figure as you can see here and uh, that will essentially mean that our E and D fields are uniformed as illustrated by the field lines shown in the dielectric here. If we moreover introduce a y-axis which will point uh, from the lower to the upper plate uh, as shown on the figure, the potential uh, in this particular case will only uh, be a function of this particular y-coordinate in the dielectric material. We also assume uh, that the fields uh, and potentials outside of the dielectric uh, will be equal to zero, so fringing fields and potentials uh, are neglected in this particular case. So what we are essentially doing in this example is that we have assumed uh, a known potential difference or voltage between our uh, conducting plates. This will enable us to determine the potential at any point inside of our capacitor, that means in the dielectric material. Knowledge of this potential will give us the electric field which again uh, will give us uh, the D field in the dielectric material. When we know the D field, we can also determine what is the induced uh, free surface charge densities uh, on our upper and lower plates. And then, of course, also we would be able to tell what is the total amount of charge in Coulomb induced on the plates. When we know this, we can determine uh, the capacitance by this standard formula uh, that you can see here. What we did in video problem uh, 5 is going essentially the other way around. We assumed uh, the total charge Q uh, and from this one we worked out the fields and also uh, then the capacitance in this particular case. So you can see the configuration again uh, on the figure on this slide. And now we have also introduced this rectangular XYZ coordinate system as shown in the figure. So uh, the space uh, between the conductors is filled with a simple and source-free dielectric material. So there are no sources inside of the dielectric material that is located between the conducting plates. So the governing equation for the potential in this region here is of course Laplace equation that you can see over here. So the Laplace equation in rectangular coordinate system is given in the explicit form as you can see it here and now our potential is only a function of y coordinate so the derivative with respect to x and the derivative with respect to z will be equal to zero. So the equation that we will have to solve is given, uh, is given by the result here. So this is a second order uh, differential equation 
and we will have to integrate this one twice with respect to y uh, to get the potential at any point inside of the dielectric. So the first integration on both sides is indicated uh, as indicated over here and of course the left hand side will give you the result here and the integration on the right hand side will give an arbitrary integration constant here uh, termed C1. Then we integrate one more time with respect to y and of course arrive at this particular uh, final result. So the integration here will of course give us C1 times y plus another unknown integration constant. So we have now the potential as a function of y uh, in the dielectric between uh, the two conducting plates. And there are two unknown integration constants and they can be determined by applying the boundary conditions uh, for this potential. What are the boundary conditions? Well here we have introduced the y-axis so that the lower plate is at y equal to 0 and the upper plate is at y equal to d. So at the upper plate we have the potential uh, v naught. so our potential here will have to recover v naught when y is equal to d. Our potential here will have to recover 0 when y is equal to 0. So this will give you two uh, easy uh, equations in two unknowns uh, that will allow you to determine the unknown constants C1 and C2. That means that you can very easily arrive at this final result uh, for your potential uh, in your parallel plate capacitor. Knowing the potential, we can take the negative gradient, which in this case uh, is given by the explicit uh, expression here, so that the electric field intensity in this case is given uh, by the result uh, found uh, in, this, uh, uh, in this expression here. So knowing the electric field, uh, we can, uh, by using the material equation or constitutive equation for our simple material, uh, also easily get the D-field that you can see here. Now when we know the D-field, we can also uh, very easily uh, determine uh, the induced free surface charge on the upper and lower plates. In this example, we will only determine this one because what you will have here is just the negative of what you have uh, over uh, here on the upper uh, conductor. And this is done by using boundary conditions. So this is the general form uh, of the boundary conditions for the normal components of the D fields. D1 is uh, the field in medium 1, D2 is the field in medium 2, and this is the unit normal vector pointing from medium 2 to medium 1. What you have on the right hand side is of course your free surface charge density that is to be determined. To use these boundary conditions, we introduce uh, this media designation so that this is our medium 1 and outside is our medium 2. So D2 uh, is the field outside and this is equal to 0. D1 is the field in our dielectric and that's the field that we have just derived. This unit normal vector, it is obvious that this is pointing in the negative y direction. I also note that uh, medium 2 can also be uh, the conducting uh, plate here if it has a substantial thickness because the fields inside of this are also equal to zero. So a very straightforward application of uh, the boundary condition with this unit normal vector pointing in the negative y direction, this field being the field that we have derived here and the second field over here being equal to zero gives uh, a straightforward uh, result for our uh, surface charge density on the upper plate. Now you can ask what is the total charge in Coulomb induced on the upper plate and this is of course the integral uh, over the surface of our surface charge density. But because this is uniformly distributed this integral will merely correspond by multiplying this result with the surface area A so that the total charge uh, induced on the upper conductor is given by the expression here. 
so uh, when you know uh, this total charge you can plug it in in this standard general expression for the capacitance uh, and simply take the ratio of the charge uh, and the assumed known potential difference to arrive at this capacitance result uh, for our parallel plate capacitor. This result is of course identical to the one we derived in video problem 5 but here please note that we have derived it by first assuming the potential difference and then in the end actually finding uh, the amount of total charge induced on our conductors. In video problem 5 we started by assuming uh, this total charge. So this essentially uh, means that we are uh, done with all of our tasks and as usual we have a few uh, problems for you. This time we would like you to check the units of all uh, quantities that we derived on the previous slide and moreover we would like you to compare very carefully the solution of this problem uh, to the one you have seen in video problem 5. Thank you very much for your attention.